Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So on the agenda tonight, we have Molly Tuttle and this is gonna be taken from a video where she plays through white Freightliner Blues and then they have a little chat about how she plays and her technique. They don't really get into the nitty gritty of the techniques, but hopefully in this video, we'll be able to dissect it a little bit more and look at what Molly's doing when she's playing. But let's get Molly up on screen and see how she gets on. Going out on highway, don't listen to them big trucks whine. I'm going out on a highway, don't listen to them big trucks whine. That white freight liner's gonna steal away my mind. And there the video is going to be cutting out because then they get into the interview section. So this is flat picking at a totally different level. The way that Molly is so accurate going across those strings. One of the things that they don't mention in the interview and when she's talking about the strings, and I'm going to put the link to this, by the way, in the description so that you can watch this video. One thing they don't mention in the interview is the expression and the change of dynamics that Molly puts into her playing as well. Because in some passages, she will lighten up on that pick so therefore getting a softer sound and then she'll really get more aggressive with the picking in certain sections as well the dynamics she really changed it at the end there, just lightening up getting a really softer sound with her picking and it gives a totally different dynamic and that's what all the top players do that I mention all the time they can take you on a journey throughout the piece it isn't always at one level it is always changing I think I'm going to let this interview play through because I can stop it and explain what Molly means when she's talking about the specific techniques on the guitar. I've been teaching guitar professionally for 14 years, so hopefully I can make it a little bit clearer because they do speak quite a lot in general terms. But let's just let the video go through a little bit more. So where, is your, where are your main points of contact on the body then? Um, so I'm, my, this part of my hand and my wrist is mm -hmm. kind of resting either on the low strings or on the bridge back here when I'm playing leads. Are you physically touching or Physically touching or is it more of just like you can kind of feel it lightly grazing there? Or are you actually It's physically resting? touching but I'm not like pressing it down. Okay. So it's just kind of resting. Mm -hmm. and, but then when I play rhythm, my wrist comes up and I'm not like... It's loose. It's not touching anywhere, yeah. Got it. So, um, so these are kind of like two modes that you click into. Yeah, basically. And you can switch between the two of them. Yeah, on the fly. I don't really think about it. 
So when you're doing uh, like the Freightliner tune then mm -hmm. there's... So as we've got there, Molly explaining what she does with her hand position. So she says that she rests the side of her hand. Of course, anyone that plays guitar will know that's called palm muting. And the prime function of palm muting is exactly like it sounds. It's to mute the strings. So Molly's not only using that palm mute to keep the E, the A and the D string quiet when she's playing those lead lines on those higher, thinner strings, but she's also using it as an anchor point so that she can be really accurate with this flat picking and the alternate picking that she's got going on. So she does jump from the D string and the E string and the A string, then onto the top strings as well, but that's all in that wide arc of that right hand. As soon as she wants to get into that nitty gritty of alternate picking and the more advanced techniques that are really fast, she needs to be anchored and of course she needs to keep those strings quiet. When you've got playing going on like this, there's such a crazy technical level on an acoustic guitar. If Molly wasn't resting on those lower strings just at the bridge, it means that those strings would be ringing out when she gets into that alternate picking. Of course, the vibrations on that acoustic guitar, I always say there's nowhere to hide on acoustic guitar. So Molly's technique is absolutely top notch. Let's get back into it. There's a lot of the, the bass chord, bass chord yeah. type of comping, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the looser form. Yeah. Okay. But then I, if I go into like the cross picking. Then my wrist comes down. Got it. So the, the, um, the, the comping form then, or the, the rhythm playing form, that's really only the contact is just up in the forearm here on the yeah. body. Yeah, basically. So how do you sense where the... How do you hit those strings, or how do you develop that? Um, just slowing it down and trying to simplify, I guess. Getting like a really, I like just tried to do it slowly and get a really even bass notes and strum. Got it. And then just building. And then Molly just touches on the absolute key to playing at a top technical level, which is start it out slow. And this is gonna be the same for every technique on the guitar and pretty much everything in your life. If you want to learn to do anything to a top technical level, you have to start it slowly so that your brain can really absorb the information that you're trying to put into it. And Molly's just saying there that she got to this level just by doing it slowly, gradually building it up. And that's the way to do it. Nobody's ever picked up a guitar and just instantly being able to play something at the top technical level up to speed because they're just naturally talented and can do it. There might be some players that gravitate more towards fast playing than slow playing, but we've all got the same brain and it always learns the same way. You have to give it bite-sized chunks before it can then take on even more information. And when I'm teaching, I compare it to a computer that the first time you try and play the guitar or play anything on the guitar, it's like the computer is working at its maximum. You need to concentrate all of your brain on that task. The more you do it and the slower you play it, the better your brain can understand it. And then it frees up a little bit of that brain to be thinking about something else. And that's just the way that the brain works. And eventually you'll see real top players like Molly who get to the level where they can now sing faultlessly over the top of really top technical playing because they've just gradually put that information into their brain over and over and over and the brain now has the capacity to do so many things at once because it's been told how to do it in sequence. You don't just jump straight into saying to your brain, right, I want you to sing, I want you to cross pick, I want you to alternate pick, I want you to string skip, I want you to change strumming patterns. There's just too many things at once. You have to literally feed it in so slowly. And the reason you get there that they don't mention on this video is something called muscle memory. And a lot of people spend so much time just hammering the muscle memory on your left hand. A lot of people don't realize that the right hand, because it's attached to the same brain, it works in exactly the same way. So every time you pick a string with your right hand, your right hand is remembering where that string is. And that's what I think Molly is trying to say here, that she's slowing it down and it then happens automatically, which is what she says. It happens automatically because the muscle memory has done it so many times, 
it doesn't have to look where the string is anymore because it knows it. The string has always been there. People like Molly, of course, have practiced so many hours every day to get it to this level. But that muscle memory knows exactly where those strings are all the time, whether it be in that strumming pattern or in that anchored position for that alternate picking. But let's get back into the video. Up that habit over time. But you, you, was there a point where you felt like the accuracy, like you'd go for a certain bass note and hit the wrong string? Yeah, definitely. I had a lot of that going on. But I've just done it so much now and right. kind of just been aware of it mm -hmm. and focused on it when I've played um, that it's not really a problem anymore too much. So y your confidence level is pretty high now when you go for a certain bass note that you Yeah, hit every that now string. and then I'll like hit the wrong string or like play it out of time, but it doesn't really happen too much anymore. Got it. And that's another interesting point that Molly says every now and again she will miss a string or you know mess up but I've mentioned with top players before when they do mess up you can never tell because they're so great at making sure nobody notices just carrying on with the performance and that's Molly will certainly fall into that category and if you imagine it you're giving your brain a set of instructions that you want it to tell your hand to do something in a particular way and in a particular formation and it will get to a point if you do play guitar you know what I'm talking about where if you try and do it too quickly, you'll fall off the cliff. You will mess up. And there's always that sweet spot of practicing just fast enough so that you don't mess up, but improving every time and then trying to push it too fast and then you start making mistakes. And the more you practice on that edge of not messing up and just being in control all the time and knowing where that limit is, where you're just playing it too fast and you need to slow down, if you keep practicing on that limit, you will then increase your playing ability a lot faster than if you just try to play it fast all the time. But what you'll find is that the more you practice, you may be able to play a piece when you first learn it, maybe one time out of 10 without making a mistake, then practice it for a few hours. You'll then play it maybe two times out of 10 and then three times out of 10 and four times out of 10. And eventually you'll be getting to the nine out of 10 mark in terms of playing through something without a mistake. Mistakes always happen. It's unavoidable, especially when you play live and something might happen that throws you off that's all part of the gig when you're playing live and being a musician but it's dealing with those unexpected situations when they do pop up real professionals like molly and other players can deal with it let's get back into it again and then um switching from that the the less anchored form to the yeah. lead playing form mm -hmm. the, the, the cross picking form what would be an example of a phrase where you would have to go from one to the other like yeah. in that tune even yeah um, so maybe like if I was doing a fill, like running out on a highway, guns into them big trucks. So there, I'm just switching really it. fast, and, and it's it's lead. this kind of thing is yeah, happening, right? It's just the wrist uh, bending, yeah, extending like this, mm -hmm. a bit, like a motorcycle. Yeah, like riding a motorcycle. <laughs> and that's you just latch right into that. Yeah, it's kind of it's just automatic at this point. Don't really think about it. And there we go. So getting into those two different ways of playing with the palm mute and without the palm mute, you could see and actually rewind it and listen to it again, because you can hear the difference that when Molly gets into that lead part with the palm mute, you can hear just those top strings because she's resting on those lower strings to really exaggerate that lead line because you want all those lower strings to be quiet. The great thing about this video, this is Troy Grady that has this on his channel, is that it's very much from a guitar player's perspective because we've got this camera rig on her guitar so we can really get a close up of exactly what's going on with her picking. But let's just have a little look at this. I just wanted to point out that descending run, you could see her technique there, the way that it's solid and she moves it all towards herself when she's coming to that low E string because that palm mute is now freeing up the strings that she wants because she's moving it solidly with the pick as it all moves up towards her. And as soon as she wants to go to that high E string, the thin string furthest away, she moves that hand all the way down and the palm mute is now collecting those lower strings, keeping them quiet. But there's only a little bit to go on this video, so let's watch it till the end.
there we go. The other thing that I just want to point out quickly is the amount of wrist rotation that Molly puts in. And because she's playing at such a high technical level, this is absolutely essential. What you'll find with some players that are just playing standard rhythm and just doing a standard strumming pattern is sometimes you get a really wide arc with that right hand. So in terms of the accuracy, if you're trying to then pick out a particular string after doing a wild downstroke or a wild upstroke, you've got so far to go to find where that string is. Whereas here, Molly absolutely has figured it out by putting in wrist rotation rather than a whole arm arc up and down. And in this angle, again, great angle, because we can see the wrist rotation, which means that her hand it's never too far away from those strings. So if she then wants to pick out that D string outside of the strumming pattern, because all she's doing is rotating her wrist, it means that the D string isn't very far from where her pick is already. You can see by the amount of movement in her forearm, there isn't a great deal. It's all wrist rotation. And that's how she is managing to do this crazy level flat picking, because this sounds like finger style, because it is so accurate and so fast that Molly He's just absolutely tweaked her technique to perfection. And this is without going into the vocals. I always say that singing and playing at the same time doubles the difficulty. And when you're looking at this kind of level of playing and singing with that really cool, relaxed vocal, it is absolutely top level. And you can only start to imagine the amount of hours Molly has put into this in order to get to this level. On the left hand, we haven't even touched on the hammer-ons, the pull-offs, the clarity of the chords. We've just all really been talking about the right hand because that's the hand that we can see really closely and that's what's providing a lot of the work and with electric guitar as well alternate picking the same techniques we've got here cross picking sweet picking as well so much about the right hand as well as that left hand and getting them synchronized but great video here top technical ability this has really been a bit of a technical breakdown of Molly's style of playing and just that right hand, the way that she gets through that work is absolutely amazing and great to see it so close up. So check out Troy Grady's channel as well if you get a chance. But thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one.